Hey guys, this is Julian, uh, and for today's video, we're going to be going into something that I am no professional at, but I have a decent understanding of that I wanted to explain what I know about to you guys, and that is the idea of mix depth and uh, creating a 3D atmosphere within your mixes or your productions in general. Now, um, this can be a very useful thing for things such as um, film scoring, uh, sound effects, sound design, and that sort of thing where you really want something to be in the mix to a point where you can hear where it's coming from or you want it to be far away or close to you or whatever. Another good example of uh, use for this would be in actual commercial mixes when you want something to be sounding large and wide. Um, the first thing you want to realize is that reverb will not make everything sound bigger. A lot of people tend to throw on uh, an excessive amount of reverb and compression and EQ just to give it that, you know, in your face kind of like church god ray kind of reverb effect like you're, you're a god in the room. And that is useful in some circumstance, but in most cases, drowning everything in reverb is going to make it sound smaller than it actually is. Um, when, when we use things like reverb and EQ and compression, we have to realize that they were created not only as effects but as mixing tools, and we have to use them as such. A lot of people think that the compressor is something that you use to make something sound different than what it is, but in reality, a compressor, an EQ, um, even some reverbs, the non-tonal ones, um, are there to be the, the the best ones considerably by mix engineers don't affect the sound as much as the ones that that are considered amateur because what when you're in a mix you don't want your your mixing effects to interfere too much with the original idea of the song um, so things like EQ reverb compression uh, are there to balance out the track. It's not necessarily there to exaggerate. And when you, you can exaggerate any effect. You can boost 300 hertz by 6 decibels for tonal effects, but that is not the same as mixing effects. And, and what we're going to be discussing today is a practical use in mixing and not in the subjective tone of your sound. So to start things off, I've loaded Serum here if we play a note or two. Completely dry, Serum sounds very centered and monotone, just like any oscillator would. Um, now, to put into perspective for a moment here, um, if you think of when you're sitting in, let's say you're sitting in a church or in a auditorium, and you shout out as loud as you possibly can, when you speak... You have to think about in from a mixing perspective what you're hearing. When you when you yell out in that stadium or that church, your your voice, the frequencies of it, are traveling very far, hitting something, returning to you, and then you're gonna be hearing what's coming back. Now, what can we relate this to in a mix? We can relate it to a low pass filter, because when you shout out if you don't know, um, higher frequencies tend to travel uh, shorter distances than, than lower frequencies. It's a fundamental fact. Like um, if you're outside of a club or a party or something and you close the door and you hear the doom, doom, doom of the sub, it's because sub can travel farther and through thicker mediums than higher frequencies. So as I was saying, if you're shouting out into a stadium, the higher frequencies are going to get a little bit lost. Granted, so if you ever hear an echo, you can hear that it's not the exact same thing back at you. You're hearing like a dampened kind of version. So the first thing would be to remove some of the highs of that sound. We're going to take out a little bit here. Let's just do a, a low pass filter here. And immediately you're starting to hear it kind of fading off into the background a little bit. The second effect that really, um, you know, defines distance like that is reverb, of course, but in a specific way. Um, 
So if we put, load a reverb here, let's just do a um, uh, isotope reverb, sure. You have to consider when you speak out, you're not getting an immediate feedback. You're getting a delayed signal because it takes time for your voice to reach the distance. And the amount of time it takes for your voice to reach that distance and then come back is the pre-delay. And that's the time it takes for the reverb to go into effect. So, the, uh, in, in, in theory, the larger the pre-delay, the um, farther the sound is coming from. So if we uh, enlarge the pre-delay here and turn the wet up, it's starting to sound like it's farther and farther away. or at least the echo of the sound is. We turn the wet all the way up, then we get something like a distant echo. Turn the dry down, and it sounds like it's way out in the distance. Um, another thing you can play with is decay time. That's the amount of time it takes for the reverb to stay in effect. Like say, if we say a one second de de decay time, excuse me, the sound will only play for one second with the reverb on it. So if you extend this uh, decay time for a little bit long, let's say two seconds, you hear how it fades out longer. Um, this can establish a, a, a sense of width to your, 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 your sound. Um, not exactly like stereo imaging width, but I'm saying like, it establishes that you're in a bigger space. And that's what decay time is for. And early reflections, um, if we turn that down, we even get a farther distance. Early reflections are essentially when you're speaking and it reflects off something in a, in a near field and then comes back at you. Um, that's what early reflections are. So if, say, you're sitting in a chair here and there's a wall here, and then there's the stadium way back there. The early reflections are something that's going to hit here and then come back to you immediately. But we don't want to use that for something like this because we want the distance to be way off. But as you can hear now, it sounds like it's very, very far away. Another thing we can do to make the opposite effect that it's very close to us is to turn that wet down turn the pre-delay down so like I was saying the amount of reverb does not dictate how large the sound is or how um, close it is to you and, and, and this is uh, contrary to popular opinion that reverb is going to make your sound sound large and, and wide. But really, what makes a sound sound strong and, and powerful in the mix is a lack thereof reverb. You know, um, reverb is meant to establish this large atmospheric sound. It's not meant to make your, your lead sound huge. And if you're going to do that, the only way you can do it is if you turn that reverb down enough that it sounds like your sound is in the is in the near field and then it's it's sound is echoing off the walls because of that small amount of wet reverb another concept that we can use is um, something called phasing um, and you do this with uh, delay now if you've ever sat um, I'm sure you have <laughs> if you sit in a room and you shout as loud as you can at this wall or, okay, forget the shout. Let's say there's a sound coming from the left of you. And when it when it hits you, it's not going to hit your right ear first. It's going to hit your left ear, and then it's going to hit your right ear. So to keep keep this in mind when you're, you're designing a sound, if you want it to sound like it's coming from your left, you aren't going to pan it left. You're going to make it hit in the left ear first, and then you're going to make it hit in the right ear, if that makes any sense at all. So this is something called phasing. And so when we throw the left image and the right image out of phase with each other, but we put the right image slightly later so that we emulate natural response time. Like if a sound is to our left, it's going to hit our left ear first, then hit our right ear a few milliseconds later. 
So to establish this, we're going to turn, we're going to, uh, okay, we're going to add the simple delay here. We're going to turn it to one second. We're going to turn off sync. And we're going to set the left ear to one millisecond. And we're going to set the right ear to 10. Turn that dry wet up. Let me add 10 here. So if we play a note now, if you're using stereo headphones or using a sound system of sorts, you should be able to hear it coming from your left side, a little bit stronger than your right side. If we were to turn up the time that it takes to get to your right side, we get even more of a dramatic difference. Now this can only be used in small increments, otherwise you'll end up with something like this. It just sounds like it's glitching from the left to the right, which is not something we want for this case. The third thing you can do is something called uh, Stereo With. Um, in Ableton we can use Utility for this. Um, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make an audio effect rack. And I actually have one, where is it, here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drag a utility in here. You're going to click here and you're going to click here again to make uh, two chains. And you're going to set one of these to zero width and you're going to set one to 100. This is just an interesting trick. I'm sorry, 200. And then essentially the, the, the uh, signal chain that's going through the 200 width is going to be extremely wide and thin. The one that's going through the main is going to be very um, standard, you know. So... Um, I'm sorry, centered and thin. So if we play it here, and then start bringing down that center one that's at zero width, we can start to hear it uh, spreading out around us a little bit more. See how it thins out? It's because there's no there's no signal going through the middle. But if we start to bring it back up, we can hear the sound starting to, to fade right back to where it was in the beginning, in the middle. And that kind of gives us a behind the head effect if we, if we put it in a certain, in a certain place. So those are just a few things you can do, um, with the exception of, you know, regular panning, of course, left and right. Um, and they're, they're just some simple concepts that you should keep in mind, um, and a mindset you should adopt, um, you know, that you have to think about what you want your sound to sound like before you start throwing crap on it. Um, like if you want your sound to be up front and in the center, you need to engineer it that way. You can't just throw on reverb and expect it to sound big. And the biggest tip I have for you is to keep contrast in mind. If, if everything in your song is going to be extremely wide and atmospheric, nothing is going to sound large. You have to have some things that are, are dry. You have to have some things that are wet. And if you want the dry things to really sound strong, you need to keep them relatively dry. So those are some of the biggest... Um, things I've come across and uh, if you have any other tips on this like with an atmospheric sound um, leave it in the comments below um, if you have any ideas for future videos that you'd like me to do uh, even if I don't know a ton about it I will do some research on it and I will try my best to explain it to you um, similar to this video I, I know a good amount about with but it's not my specialty so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. Um, and let me know what you thought about it in the comments so I can know what to change next time. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, channel. Subscribe for more videos like this. I make a video every Wednesday and Friday. It could be vlogs. It could be uh, tutorials like this. And yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. And as always, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Bye-bye.